I am pleased to show you the greatest thing that's ever been invented for someone who has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or as we like to say, somebody who can't sit still. But it's one of about five or six different fidget toys out on the market. It's really kind of cool. Um, it's kind of hard to show with one hand, but you know, it spins around. All right, it's really cool. You know, you can sit here and play with it and watch it. And the theory behind these is that you have a kid who has trouble focusing and just sort of fidgety in his or her seat. You can give them one of these, and it gives them a way to occupy themselves so that uh, they can focus more on class. And a lot of kids have these. The problem is it doesn't help them focus in class. They're more fascinated by this little deal and how fast they can get it to spin or the kids next to them like, ooh, I want to hold it. I want to see it. And if it's not this, they may have one of those little cube things. It's got all kinds of little buttons and knobs and things that they can um, that they can fiddle with. Uh, like I said, there's somewhere between five and ten different things on the market. I've even seen uh, writing utensils, writing pens that have little knobs and twisters and buttons and things you can push while you're writing to give you something else to do. I borrowed this from one of my kids today so I could share it with you and I borrowed it towards the end of one of my classes and I found myself as I was teaching and I sort of wrapping the class up, I was holding it in my hand, and as I was doing my thing, I was just subconsciously, or unconsciously, maybe that's the right word, I don't know, I was awake when I did it, I'm not sure exactly which one of those words it would be, but doing the little fidgety things with it. Here's the difference between me doing it and one of my kids who has ADHD doing it. I was still engaged, and... For those of you who think that this is going to solve your child's academic problems if they have ADHD, we might want to do a little bit more research into that. I think these can have a place, but they have to be part of a bigger system. And if you watch enough of my videos, you know how I feel about systems and a system approach to things. The last couple of days have been great examples about what happens when you can plan a good assignment and turn the kids loose and let them learn about something that they are interested in. Did a couple of things. Science class, we've been studying the human body and we've studied six out of ten systems. Actually six out of eleven. We're not doing a reproductive system. The four that were remaining gave those to the kids, put them in groups and said, all right, here's your system, you have to go research, you have to teach the class. It's amazing, every time I do a, a lesson like this, how much the kids learn. I had a professor who used to say, whoever works the hardest learns the most. And that is something that we so often forget as teachers because we work so hard to prepare these lessons and we want to deliver this content because we can put in all these explanations, etc. And there's certainly a place in that. But when we do all the talking, we're doing all the learning. And I can recall, well, even as recently as this year, even though I've been doing this for 27 years now, when I'm teaching something, when I'm talking about it, when I'm explaining it, I always get a new insight. So I really need to take that shoe and put it on the student's feet and let them experience in that, let them learn that. I can promise you that the, I say that I can promise you a lot. I can promise you that it's more than likely the case that the students who taught the nervous system learn more about the nervous system way more than they would have by listening to me. Another project that's turning out to be successful and frustrating is a project that we're doing in math class. You know, you have that old adage of, when am I ever going to use this? And we're doing a unit on statistics and uh, data collecting and analysis. Excuse me, that's the correct terminology. It's a statistics unit. 
So we're using the things we're learning in statistics about finding measures of centrality, measures of variability to answer questions like who really is the best quarterback or who is the best music artist? Who does make the best pizza? The kids are having to determine questions similar to that. They create their own question, something that they're really interested in. They have to conduct surveys to see what popular opinion is. Then they have to research data and do an analysis of data over time and use that empirical evidence to answer the question of who is the best fill in the blank. It's a lot of work to this project and when I first described the project to the kids they were like oh oh my gosh this is we'll never get this all done but they are so into it. The negative aspect of this project has been however the data is not easy to find at least not for a seventh grader. The other difficulty that we're running into with this project is some of the kids have really gotten into it and, and they're making they're just humongous and they realize that picking the best quarterback you need to look at more than just how many touchdown passes that quarterback had over the course of 10 seasons or what is the annual revenue of my favorite fast food restaurant and you certainly don't want to stifle a student's curiosity a student's desire to learn you don't want to take those rare moments where a student is like, oh man, I'm really going to get into this thing and, and kill that because you don't know what the long-term consequences are. And you hope you find the right middle point that enables a student to just really pursue the learning and applying it and satisfying that curiosity with your own needs to have something that becomes uh, manageable for you as, a, as an assessor, as the teacher who has to then unfortunately put some kind of score on a learning experience which oh, I won't even go into that. You know I hate grades. The last couple of weeks have been really exciting at school because the lessons have been engaging. The students have been really into it. They have enjoyed the learning process. They've enjoyed doing the work because they haven't really seen it as working. Uh, it's something that has grabbed their attention. It's something that, uh, that they're doing, that they are enjoying, and the learning is just happening. The key point to this is not let's make everything fun so the kids will do it and we can trick them into learning. The key point to this is finding a way to engage the students. Those little fidget toys that I mentioned at the beginning you give one of those to a kid who doesn't have ADHD and they're going to play with it if the lesson is not engaging. They are not invested in this activity in the lesson. And, and honestly, there are some days where it doesn't matter how much work you've put into it as a teacher, how much blood and sweat, how much um, or how interesting you think it is or how great this lesson may have gone with the previous year's class or maybe even with this, within the same school year. You teach, I teach two sections of science, two sections of math. It's amazing how differently a lesson will go over between those two different sections. Sometimes it just doesn't grab them. When you become fortunate enough because of the work you've put into it that you're able to grab them and to see them run with the learning, that is perhaps one of the most rewarding aspects of the teaching day. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe down below. And as always, remember to give somebody a reason to hope and learn something new every day.